Welcome to our training on student surveys. My name is Juliana Cotto and I'm a policy fellow for the Youth and Education Privacy at the Future Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are to understand what is required under PPRA or the Protection of Pupil Rights Amendment when administering student surveys and to learn best practices for administering student surveys. So why would you want to administer student surveys? There are several reasons, including to assess student engagement, understand the needs of your students and families. So particularly in a transition to remote environment, you may want to learn about student internet access, device access, or other home circumstance, such as do they have access to a room where they can focus during class time. Other personal circumstances, so educational needs, health needs, which can include physical accommodations, allergies, and mental health needs. And lastly, food security to be able to allocate or provide resources. Other reasons are to evaluate if something is working or not. And survey responses can contribute to educational research. PPRA, or the Protection of Pupil Rights Amendment, is a federal law that applies to most surveys. PPRA requires schools to allow parents to see survey materials provided to their children. It also requires parental notification and or consent before students can participate in surveys administered by schools if that survey reveals sensitive information. So this sensitive information includes the eight categories listed below, political affiliations or beliefs, mental or psychological problems, sex behavior or attitudes, illegal, antisocial, self-incriminating or demeaning behavior, critical appraisals of family, privileged relationships, religious practices, affiliations or beliefs, and finally, income. Here are important survey features you want to be intentional about and think about when developing or using a survey, because under PPRA, it will determine how you must administer that survey. First, are you requiring that all students must take the survey? Next, will the survey cover any sensitive information? So think about those eight categories we just listed. And think not just about the questions and what they're asking, but will students put any answers that include sensitive information, regardless of whether the question explicitly asked about it or not? So think about open-ended questions. Next, will the survey be opt-in or opt-out? So in opt-in, before giving a survey, that user, typically the guardian or parent, will have to take an affirmative action to offer their consent before their child's being given that survey. In an opt-out situation, all students can be given the survey unless that parent has taken action to withdraw their consent. Lastly, will students be putting their names on the survey or can their answers be otherwise identified? or will the survey be anonymous? When determining what PPRA requires of how you administer your survey, the two features you must carefully consider are if student participation is required and if the survey will cover sensitive information. Again, not if the questions are asking about sensitive info, but if you believe students may give answers containing said sensitive information. So in a survey where student participation is required and does cover sensitive information, you must provide notice and parents must opt in in order for the student to take the survey. In a survey where yes, student participation is required and no, it does not cover sensitive information, again, you must provide notice for the parents here have the right to opt out. In a survey where student participation is not required, but it will cover sensitive information, parents have the right to opt out. Note that you should check your specific state law first. And again, make sure you're providing notice. In a survey where student participation is not required and it will not cover sensitive information, you must provide notice only if the survey was created by a third party. And in that case, parents have the right to opt out. Social and emotional learning surveys pose unique concerns, as many times questions in SEL surveys can result in students revealing personal and sensitive information about themselves. 
These answers can then be entered into a permanent record that classifies students. So maybe pulling answers that's been flagged for potential behavior issues or safety concerns. In addition, some parents don't want teachers to quote unquote, interfere with values. They don't feel comfortable with teachers asking about the social emotional aspect of their child's lives, which can feel a lot more personal. Lastly, it's difficult to make SEL surveys truly anonymous. A lot of times answers can be traced back to individual students because of the personal information that they're giving in their answers. Also, despite making the survey initially anonymous, teachers may be required to try to trace back the answers because of an answer that was written by a student that prompts teachers who are mandated reporters. So here are best practices for educators to consider when asking students to participate in a survey. One, talk to your administration to understand the local requirements. Every district should have a PPRA policy, and in addition, there are state laws. Some states have expanded PPRA, so in thinking back to those eight categories of sensitive information, they may have expanded those to include other categories of information as well. Next is knowing when surveys will cover sensitive information, so not only those questions, but anticipating student answers. And lastly, think about when parents must be provided an opt-in consent versus an opt-out consent. Now we'd like you to participate in this activity. We've listed out four different survey scenarios where we write down the feature of whether or not student participation is required. And we also provide some level of detail of the types of questions that can be found in this survey. This can help give you an idea of whether or not sensitive information will be revealed in the survey. Using this information, we'd like you to decide, should you provide parents with an opt-in or opt-out? Feel free to use the table that we provided previously. And in addition, we will provide a guide key on how we thought about this activity in the resources. Thank you for joining this training.